again, the reason this is called achieving racial equity and inclusion in, edu in business, education, wealth, and health, it's in all of our systems. That means we're all complicit. But what's the good news about that is that means we can all be a part of the solution. So if you work for one of those companies that has made a grand declaration about what they're going to do for equity and inclusion, we're asking you to join this movement, this grassroots movement, to really add a little additional pressure to those CEOs who for years, you'll hear, you'll hear Bill talk about this. This is not a new conversation. These same CEOs who said that they are 100% focused on changing things, this is a conversation we've had for years. So what we're bringing to you is a new conversation, a new activation, the opportunity to truly transform. It's not enough to talk about it. It's not enough to, uh, at some level, it's not enough to protest about it. It's, it's, it ought to be a call to action for us to do some things differently. Uh, about it, and that's really uh, what the essay was about. It, it was about the responsibility that we all have to change the status quo, to make a difference, to address systemic racism in some concrete ways that, that ultimately uh, will lead to its demise. It's also a recognition uh, that, that we have to hold ourselves accountable. I want to draw awareness to the things that you don't want to talk about, that you want to sweep underneath the rug. That is the reality of the life that we live day in and day out. I'm done with trying to make you feel like it's okay. It's not your problem. It's not your fault. It is your problem. And until you recognize and realize that it is your problem, you're not going to do anything about it. what it is that we need to really do in organizations. And they know, quite frankly, they know what they need to do. Uh, there is a CEO action plan that started about, oh, three years ago, 2017. And there are now well over a thousand companies that have signed on with a commitment, a stated commitment to furthering diversity and advancing diversity and inclusion in the business. Yet and still today, we still see the tremendous disparities that have resulted from, I'll call it false promises. And what Brene Brown likes to say, that's going to be the next video that we share with you. She talks about owning our stories. So what we're doing as a part of this exercise is we're bringing stories. We're, we're, we're bringing a voice and power to the voiceless and to those who felt powerless. But we're also creating a space for those with power, those who say they want to change things. You are welcome. We actually need you. This session on 7-7 was amazing. It was over 80% Black people. And what we said to ourselves, leaders, executives, professionals, and students, we're not going to be able to change this on our own. Individually, what we can do is invite each of you to be a part of change. Whoever you are, culture by definition is about how we change things together. And it starts with telling our stories. Here's what Brene Brown has to say. If we own our story, we get to write the ending. And if we don't own our story, the story owns us. And I think in the gifts of imperfection, I really, that was the first time in my life personally that I've owned my story, that I wrote about, hey, look, I had this complete breakdown at 41. Um, I fell apart. I got, I was so tired and exhausted from trying to outrun vulnerability and outrun perfectionism. If we think about collectively, if we know it's true in our own lives that the stories we own, we get to write the ending, and the stories that we don't own, own us, we can take that micro lesson and apply it in a macro concept, in a community concept. The stories that we don't own collectively own us. We have to own the story in order to write the different ending. We need to write our narrative collectively on what that looks like. Because if you say nothing, you leave it up for interpretation on what your thoughts, ideas, and opinions are. Even if you don't know what to say, to be honest and genuine, to say, I don't know what to say. 
I don't know where to begin. What can I do? We have to write the narrative for that. We can't allow absence um, of thought to, or commenting on it, to step in and speak on our behalf. And we definitely need to hold corporations accountable And we all see the world through this unique lens. The whiter, more Judeo-Christian, straighter, middle-class, educated we are, the more likely it is that we were told that how we see the world is actually the world. And how other people see the world is another unreal version of the, of the world. That our, our view is the world. The thing that's hard, and the thing I think we make a mistake, even in my field in social work, we tell people that empathy is putting down that lens and picking up the lens of another person. I'm going to pick up the lens of an Asian American student who's first generation immigrant who is, we can't put down the lens. The lens is soldered to our face. That's how we see the world. So how, if empathy requires perspective taking, how do we take the perspective of other people if the lens that we see the world through is soldered to us? The answer is you believe people's stories, you believe people's experiences as they tell them to you. You believe when people tell their story and say, this is my experience of what it was like to work there. This is my experience of what it was like to be a student there. This was my experience of what it was like to be called that that you don't run that through your lens, you understand that the world that they see through their lens is as real and honest and truthful as the world that we see through our lens. We are trying to unpack and unbundle hundreds of years of, well, I won't call it racism, but discriminatory behavior, which is rooted in racism, so the, the, the work that needs to be done is it has to be very intentional. It's got to be very focused. And leaders of the organizations really need to be clear about what it is that they're really talking about. We've got to prepare for, be prepared for when this isn't the issue of the moment and still work and still uh, push forward. Uh, because it doesn't happen by itself, it happens because people make the effort on an ongoing basis, on a systemic basis, if you will, to change that. There are about five professionals from academic institutions, government agencies, nonprofit, global corporations, and they were all there to discuss and answer the central question around why do Black people need to be underrepresented in the executive suite given the proven economic benefits of diversity? Uh, and after a series of discussions, there are four themes that emerged, and I'll go through each of those and provide a little bit of context. And again, I think all these things have already been said, and this think tank that we held uh, now almost four years ago, you know, we, we had just kind of a blank slate discussion. There were no prompts. Uh, the, the, the themes that came out were all organic based on the conversation. Uh, so the first was unconscious bias. And again, the four themes that emerged around why that persists and continues to be a problem, unconscious bias, inequitable performance standards, lack of support systems, and CEO accountability measures. Systems uh, of inequity flourish because they convince people that they are powerless to stop them. That's mm. it. Hold on. No, no, no. You got to say that again. You got to <laughs> say that again. Pause, pause. Una momento. Can't do it. <laughs> That's foundational. Systems of inequity exist because people believe they are powerless to change them. Right.
So why, why now and, 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 and why should we be talking about this? I mean, it's time to strike while the iron is hot. I mean, with all of the things that are going on in the world, um, we are sadly mistaken if we think what we see happening in the world is not a carbon copy of what's basically been drugged into the corporate America world. It is a replication of that. And um, we have to fix um, some of the uh, discrepancies that exist in terms of equality, um, equity, access, and power. And really the only way to do that is to take full advantage of a lot of the movement um, that's taking place in these conversations and then hold corporate America accountable for the very people, the very group that have definitely helped to um, really, um, I'm gonna say support, but I don't mean that in a way in terms of um, calling it neglect. Although to some degree you could call it neglect of the things that are happening in this world. And yes, particularly the black African-Americans. And while our black men are a target for a lot of what we're seeing, let's not get it twisted. Black women, we are seeing a lot of that happening as well. Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, we are on the chopping block as well. In this first session, what we did, and we were very specific, you'll see these guests and we're gonna go into uh, more specifics, but it was really about creating a case for change. We can't unite for change as we, if we don't believe there's really something that needs to be changed. So when you think about the racial unrest in this country, and you think about people that are protesting in the streets of America today, they're protesting because of inequality, injustices, racism, abuse, trauma. And those same things that happen in the streets of America every day are also happening in corporate America. They're happening in every business in America. Sometimes the past isn't even the past, right? And so we talk about the, the history and the structures that have been in place whether it be you know, uh, from slavery to Jim Crow to, um, to redlining to um, exclusion from certain, um, certain job categories. Um, you know, the, um, the, those things are still happening, right? Um, and you know, so let's be honest with me, uh, um, somebody else, uh, I think it was Michelle was talking right about, you know, not, not having access to, to certain opportunities or not, not um, you know, the, 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 or, um, I think it was Bill, you were talking about the, the trend line, right, for, for wealth, right, is, is going down. Racism and discrimination against Black people is not a Black people's problem. That is, it's not a problem that you have to ask us to fix something that we did not ask to participate in. Um, we, we are not the problem. It's a collective. It is a humanity problem. And we've got to get our heads around that and understand and recognize that what has been done before is not working. So we need to clearly do something different. So the fact that, that we still, you know, we still don't graduate African-Americans from high school at the same rate we graduate white. Right? We don't, they don't get into college at the same rate. We don't graduate college at the same rate. Um, you know, the fact that we, that, um, that, um, you know, so, so I guess, you know, maybe, so one takeaway, right, is that um, the past isn't the past, the past is now. A lot of times it's what we, each of us, I think, want to say, but when you're working inside of an organization, there's a, you know, a paradox, right, that, that exists. You don't want to upset the apple cart. Um, you know, if you're one of those individuals who works inside of an organization and you've heard your CEOs make these grand declarations, but your lived experience is different, we are here for you. If you're an ally, a white professional or a white leader, and you're like, okay, there's obviously a problem here, but I don't know what to do about it. Join us. Join this Bigger Than Me movement. This is for you. It's for you. It's for us to really change things, to change the status quo.
We are starting a movement. We're really changing the status quo. And this movement is called the Bigger Than Me Success Series, Achieving Racial Equity and Inclusion in Business, Education, Wealth, and Health. Yes, it's a systems change. So this really is about how do we think about those problems that we know exist, those key challenges? How do we bring together adaptive leadership, positive psychology, as well as something that's very simple. It's called self-directed learning. So when you know a thing, it's really not about knowing it. Information is only one part of the equation. Information only leads to transformation through activation. And so what we're doing today is we're recapping a session that was on 7-7. It's a six-part transformational series. And the sessions are on 7 7, 8 8, 9 9, 10 10, 11 11, and 12 12 of 2020. So there's going to be monthly initiatives, national initiatives, but we're also hosting recaps and deeper conversations using this weekly show. So I'm super excited and we're going to get right to it. So we're going to start with a simple video, one of my favorites, around how to start a movement. Check this out because eventually they would be ridiculed for not joining in. And that's how you make a movement. But let's recap some lessons from this. So first, if you are the type, like the shirtless dancing guy, that is standing alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals. So it's clearly about the movement, not you. <laughs> okay, but we might have missed the real lesson here. The biggest lesson, if you noticed, did you catch it? Is that leadership is over glorified. That yes, it was the shirtless guy was first and he'll get all the credit, but it was really the first follower that transformed the lone nut into a leader. So as we're told that we should all be leaders, that would be really ineffective. If you really care about starting a movement, have the courage to follow and show others how to follow. And when you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first one to stand up and join in. And what a perfect place to do that, Ted. Do you love that? <laughs> what I love about that is, this is so simple. This Bigger Than Me success series really is about transforming hearts and minds. It's about co-creating solutions and implementing known solutions. It's really, this isn't a new conversation, but what is new is this is a critical point in history where we all agree talking about solving a problem a problem that we've talked about for years and not taking new transformational action. It's just, it's just not acceptable. What we're gonna do with this Bigger Than Me success series is we're offering this to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are, from Microsoft to McDonald's, from the CEO to the janitor, from the East Coast to the West Coast, the North to the South, it doesn't matter who you are, everyone's welcome. It also doesn't matter where you are in your journey because this is about creating a safe space for everyone to learn and grow.